I'm building a 10 meter dipole antenna. Now this is not your typical dipole antenna. This is meant to be a heavy duty dipole that is going to be used on the 10 meter repeater that I've been doing some videos on. And you can see I've got some 16 millimeter tubing here on the ground. That is approximately three, two three meter lengths. I need to cut that down to the correct length. I'm using these, these are called, well these are called Pertec clamps, but they're also known as Staff or Stauff clamps. And these are fit 16 millimeters, as you can see there. And I've mounted one here on top of this 40 by 40 millimeter aluminium box tubing. And basically what happens is the element will pass through into this gland and then into the middle here of this box and also here on the other side. I need a slightly bigger garage, but I'm gonna to have to move outside once I put these elements in. But uh, I've mounted this box. This is a weatherproof box, which I've bolted here to the aluminium tubing. And uh, then what I'm going to do is I've got somewhere here an FT240 toroid, and that's going to sit here in the bottom of the box and I'm going to have a cable gland with some RG58 coming through, wrapped around the toroid for common mode um, current suppression. And then that's going to connect onto the two legs uh, of the dipole here. So the main thing about this is to make it heavy duty and durable because it's going to be up a tower and I want it to last quite a long time. So there's a couple of things that I had to uh, keep in mind as well as making sure to avoid water getting into the box as much as possible. I'm still going to um, tape up and uh, weatherproof the coax that's going to be inside the box. But otherwise, even if a little bit of water does get in, we'll drill some holes so that uh, it can weep out. Now, this is also going to be mounted vertically. So it's gonna kind of be like that on the mast with the tubing pointing up and down um, because 10 meter repeater uh, antennas are generally vertical. And I've got here a bracket, which this has got my two U-bolts in it. Let me take that out. And what happens is this plate will be on the bottom of the boom. We're gonna call it the boom. Now it's offset here uh, for a reason. And that was so that uh, the middle of the box there, you can see those two screw holes. Um, if I was to drill into those, which are sitting in the center of the box, then I uh, would have a bit of a problem and I'd have some water um, coming into the box because these threads go all the way through to the other side. So I couldn't drill straight through these. I could have mounted the box this way so that they're pointing um, sort of up and down the boom. So the box is that way. Uh, but then there kind of wasn't enough room for the toroid. It would sort of sit underneath the element and it would be a bit hard to do. So anyway, I just offset it, which is not too much of a problem. A couple of bolts there. And I might also use a bit of silicon or something just to stop the water from getting into those. But um, getting back to this bracket, I've got my two U-bolt holes. And what we're going to do is probably mount that onto the boom like so. Then our bracket will sit like that. We can then have a pole that then mounts this way onto the back of the boom, and then that will sort of stand off the antenna from, uh, sorry, support the antenna out from the tower. Now, the reason I wanna mount it like that is because when you space it out a certain distance, and I'll put up a little bit of a model here of what it's going to actually look like. It's a very high tower. If you space it out, I've got the spacing, I think about one point two five or a meter out from the tower you actually get a little bit of forward gain and where i'm located here there's not a lot south so i can point the antenna north get a little bit more gain north and uh it also plays a little bit around with the tuning as well because a dipole antenna is typically about 72 ohms at the feed point so which is more than more than fine for what we want but if you do mess around with the spacing out from the tower you can get it down to um, almost 50 ohms. Uh, gonna be a little bit of experimentation, but I'm hoping that it works quite well. Now, some people might be wondering, how do you actually measure the length of the dipole that you need? So the formula that you need to use is, it's a half wave dipole. So we need to do 300 divided by the frequency. So 300 divided by, in my case, 29.7 megahertz, which is close enough to the frequency that I want. And that's around about 10. 
one zero meters, I think it is, or 10.05, I can't think off the top of my head, but it's something like that. So that is one wavelength. What we need to do is we then need to halve that because that is our half wavelength because our dipole is a half wavelength long. So that would then be what, 5.05 meters. And that is for the total length of the antenna. Now, because the dipole is split in half, we basically need to then half that again so that we get our lengths for each side. So we end up being roughly around about two and a half meters on each side. So depending on what center frequency you want, you'll need to um, adjust your frequency accordingly, but that is basically how you calculate the length of your dipole antenna. So here's one of my elements now um, mounted, and all I've got to do is just tighten up that gland, and then that will stop any water from getting down and into there. I'm going to drill this out to connect my coax on. It gets supported here by the clamp. Incidentally, these clamps are called hydraulic hose clamp fittings. Um, they're meant for yeah, hydraulic hoses but they're very, very good for making Yagi antennas out of, for making dipoles like I'm making here because you can use them to, to space your elements to insulate them from the boom. And I've just got a, a couple of um, bolts straight through there too. Um, on the end of this element, I've also got an end cap, which this is just a uh, end cap from the bottom of a, a table, sort of a table leg or a chair leg. Got that from the local hardware and then that'll stop any water from um, trickling down and into here. You can also put silicon in the end as well, but um, those, uh, those, here they are here, those uh, external round chair tips, black rubber, they're just a little bit better. And it, I've heard that putting those on the end of the element will change the tuning a little bit, but at 10 meters, I mean, it's probably not gonna change it all that much. Oh, here we go, I actually forgot. I do have the stout clamps. So these are, 12 millimeters, I think. So you can get these 12.7, what's that? That's one inch. So you can get these, um, I think you can get these online if you just search for Stauff, S-T-A-U-F-F. -F. Um, you can get them from a range of different places. You can also, there's some um, ham radio antenna manufacturers that will sell these as um, element insulators as well. So to build your Yagis or to build your antennas out of them. Um, you can get them in a range of different sizes. So um, they're the stuff ones I do quite a lot of different ham radio related videos on here that might be interesting to you Make sure that you subscribe if you aren't already so go ahead that red button down there You know what to do and these stuff clamps. They are very handy for building all sorts of different antennas So we've got the dipole here today I've also built a few Yagi antennas out of them as well. And also we built a six meter Moxon antenna, which is for restricted space places. So if you wanna learn more about that and that antenna, it's actually a pretty cool little build, then there is a video that will appear on the screen right now and you can go over and check out how we put it together.